Here are 50 mom things that I quit to go from burnt out mom to thriving mom. I quit being busy. Busy does not equal successful, especially when it comes to raising kids and maintaining a home. I learned to prioritize my life and to take ownership of those choices. I quit getting stuck in mom guilt. We're all gonna feel it sometimes and that's totally okay. Notice it and move on. I quit letting my kids do whatever they wanted. Now, I never truly let them do whatever they wanted, but there have definitely been times when I have let them invade my space and invade my stuff and invade my time. Boundaries are very important and I will link that video of what I don't let my kids do. I quit staying clocked in 24 seven. Being a mom is a job and I think that we should be defining our work hours. Even if you're responsible for being with your kids all the time, you should at least have defined waking hours and defined bedtime hours that your kids are expected to be in their rooms. I will put in the description my bedtime boot camp that will totally help walk you through this process. I quit wearing yoga pants or sweats every day. <laughs> now this is a hard one. All of us stay at home moms have totally been in that boat at one point or another, but ladies getting dressed to feel confident every day will dramatically impact your life. I quit putting myself last. All the kids wanted more raspberries, so I would give up my raspberries so that they could all have more. Or my kid wanted to show me something and so I would cut off this really pleasant conversation with my spouse so that I could go and look. It takes a toll if you're putting yourself at the bottom of the pile over and over again. I quit trying to do everything. I want to be a fit mom and I want to make meals from scratch and I want to be a couponing mom and a homeschooling mom. I want to be a crafty mom and an outdoorsy mom, right? We want to do all the things, but there just is not the time or the bandwidth for that. I quit silently resenting my spouse. I learned to be vulnerable and to voice my struggles. I learned to ask for what I wanted and to express what I needed. I learned to let him help me and to accept whatever that looks like. I quit stressing milestones. My kids walk when they walk and they talk when they talk. They potty train when they potty train. I will link my video to how I potty train without any stress if that's something you're dealing with right now. I quit rolling my eyes at the term self-care. I thought all those moms were spoiled and selfish and I thought that I was better because I didn't need anything for me ever. Boy, was I wrong and what a journey it's been for me. Save yourself some headache and just jump there sooner. <laughs> I quit isolating myself. I finally made the effort to find other women and to stay connected with other women who were just kindred spirits and really enhanced my life. I quit managing too much stuff. Declutter ladies, I don't need to say anything more than that. I quit social media. Now to be fair, I never really started social media, but kind of. I quit decorating for holidays. Just personal preference to lessen the load. I quit spending time with people who didn't lift me up. Notice those energy suckers, ladies. They are all over the place and I'm pretty ruthless about this and it leads to me thriving for sure. I quit doing it alone. I now call on neighbors for playdate exchanges. I pay babysitters whenever I can. I ask grandparents for favors and I let my husband take a night once a week so that I get a night off. I quit watching things that made me sad or stressed or overwhelmed. Life is just too short for those things. I quit doing things that I didn't wanna do. You can watch my video all about mom's job titles. I quit staying inside all the time. Sometimes I forget how energizing it is to just get out of the house and to be outside. I quit being a short order cook, designating hours of when the kitchen is open and closed and designating what's served has really changed everything for me. I will link my snack video that I just did and it will kind of map that out for you. I quit people pleasing. Learning what feels good to me and not being afraid to follow through with it has really aligned me with what thriving looks like for me. I quit trying to be the hero. A lot of what I used to do was done in an effort for me to earn other people's affection or praise, including my own, honestly. I wanted the gold star for dropping everything to help my kid find the missing piece that was carelessly misplaced, right? I quit believing that moms never get breaks. This belief was painted all over my life for so many years and thank goodness I have found some intentional beliefs that serve me a lot better. 
I quit staying in indecision. It's incredibly draining and exhausting if we stay in I don't know land for too long. Weighing pros and cons and researching and all of that figuring out is just a really, really heavy mental load to carry. I quit comparing myself to other moms. It's just unnecessary and unhelpful. I also stopped comparing my kids to other kids. Same story, honestly. By the way, if you're finding this helpful, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Your support really means the world to me. I quit feeling guilty about enjoying myself. Now, doesn't this sound silly, but surely I am not the only woman with this tendency, right? Please tell me in the comments. <laughs> We're doing everyone in our lives a huge favor to find what fills us up and to do more of it. It's really that simple. I quit trying to predict the future. As moms, we sometimes put incredible pressure on ourselves to know everything about our kids and to anticipate what will be the perfect way to you know, teach them this thing or to get them down this path. Holy moly, mama, just your kid is experiencing life and we kind of just need to you know, take a breather sometimes. I quit saying yes to anything and everything. Learning to say no is a skill that not a lot of us have. I'd bet that the more you do it, the more you will start thriving. I quit trying to be perfect. Talk about pressure. It was a self-inflicted expectation that set me up for disappointment that set me up for disappointment every single day. I quit entertaining my kids. That's a path for burnout for sure. And it's just totally not your job. I quit judging other moms. If you're judging others, we're likely to be judging ourselves and that's really where it's coming from. And just, we don't need that. I quit needing to be everyone's everything, every second of every day. You might think that this is in the job description of being a mom, but it is absolutely not. That's got burnout written all over it. I quit endlessly consuming information. The need to know the perfect way of doing something can really keep us stuck and overwhelmed. I'm all about making informed decisions and trust me, I do research a lot of things, but don't miss the mark on this one. I quit thinking that there's a one size fits all. That goes for me in motherhood as well as in my parenting. I quit looking for the right answers. <laughs> Morals and values, yes, I know right from wrong, but so many life decisions and motherhood related topics do not fall into that category. And so I stopped being paralyzed by the fear of making a wrong decision when there really was no wrong decision. I quit saying no to spending money. I'm probably still one of the more frugal people out there, but it's awful boxing yourself into a life where you never allow yourself to spend money on anything ever. I quit doubting myself. The older I get, the more confident I am that only I know what's right for me and for my family. I quit deciding that I was never enough. This was a choice and such a sad one, don't you think? Of course I was burnt out if the decision was already made that I would never be enough. I quit skipping date nights. Friday nights are now the greatest thing in the entire world. Now that my husband and I are religious about this, it really has been a game changer for me. I quit beating myself up for killing houseplants. <laughs> I used to have a real problem with that and ironically, I haven't killed one since making that shift. I quit being super concerned about germs. Basic hygiene, avoiding any blatant illnesses. We're good, you know? Okay, rapid fire, the last eight. I quit hating winter. <laughs> what good comes from that? I quit caring about what other people think. What they think about me is quite frankly, none of my business. I quit trying to control my kids. They're gonna do what they're gonna do. I have rules and consequences in place, so no need for me to get overly worked up about what their choice is one way or the other. I quit being a clean freak. <laughs> Lowering standards has equal thriving for me. I quit staying up late. I'm in bed every single night by 10 p.m. Sleep is just crucial for my thriving. I quit trying to keep my kids' rooms looking how I want them to look. <laughs> We do a five minute pickup every day, but the reality is that their room is probably just always gonna be a little bit messier than my room and how I would like their room to be, and that's okay. I quit spending all of my free time on housework. It's easy to get sucked into that, but just don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> 
I quit homeschooling my kids. I did it for a really long time. I loved it and I love the idea of continuing to do it, but this just was a necessary change for me to get out of burnout and into thriving for this season. Mama, do what you need to do. Quit doing whatever you need to quit doing to start thriving. There are no universal suggestions ever, right? Just me sharing what has worked for me to hopefully empower you to identify what will work for you. You ladies are amazing and I will see you soon.